So when you think about web hosting, you have quite a few options. The first thing you'd probably think about would be going to someplace like HostGator or GoDaddy, setting up a hosting account, getting your WordPress set online, and boom, you're up in like five minutes, which does work, and it is a pretty quick and easy way of getting a site online. However, doing stuff like that does come with some side effects. First of all, you're at the mercy of those hosting providers. If they go down, your site will go down. If they have a security problem, you might be involved in that security issue, among so many other things including the main factor that is you have to pay them either monthly or yearly to have your site hosted there. Now, self-hosting has always been a thing. Exactly when you think about them, that's what they are doing. They're just selling their self-hosted solution to you. But you can actually self-host your own website within your own home, and it's actually easier than you might think. I've been doing it for quite a few months at this point um, with a program called Unohost. And I find Unihost to be one of the easiest ways to get yourself set up with a personal or I guess you could use it for commercial sites um, to get those sites set up all on a server, older computer, or even a Raspberry Pi within your own home. In today's video, I'm going to kind of walk you through how to get one of those servers set up, get it online, and connect your domain so you can host your own WordPress, Drupal, Jellyfin, among hundreds of other options all here within your own home. So without further ado, let's get started. Alrighty, so the first step in getting your Unihost instance set up is actually heading over to unihost.org so we can get it set up. So I had it over here already, um, and the first thing you're gonna do is just click on what. Um, this will kind of give you an overview if you want to read through like what Unihost is. It just kind of talks about what they do, the services they provide, and what Unihost actually is. Um, and really the only button we're looking for is this getting started. From here, it's going to ask you, what do you want to install Unohost on? You have quite a few options, and the main ones that I would recommend looking at are the Raspberry Pi, VirtualBox, regular computer, and remote server. They're basically self-explanatory. VirtualBox is if you want to run Unohost on the computer that you actively have within a virtual machine. It works on any x86-based computers there, um, because that's really what VirtualBox works on. From there, you have Raspberry Pi. Um, but the Raspberry Pi can run Unihost in a simple sense. I wouldn't run too many programs on it because it is a tiny computer. It doesn't have that much power. So it could have a hard time running more intensive programs like a media server like Jellyfin, which you can install, or a really large WordPress or Drupal site. But it can run pretty simple stuff like, again, like a, simple WordPress, or a simple WordPress blog or a simple CMS. It can do that. The ARM board is basically any other ARM-based computer that they support. I haven't experimented with that one at all yet, but I know it is indeed an option. Then you have regular computer. This is the method I would recommend using if you are running it on an older laptop, uh, a replacement, maybe you have a Mac Mini that you can run this on, a different server that you might have picked up or bought that's inside your own home. Basically what this will do is it will give you an operating system file that you can flash to a USB stick or write to a DVD if your computer has a DVD drive. And this will basically run all the hard work for you and get it all installed for you. And then your final option is remote server, which is if you opened up a server with AWS, Linode, or a cloud computer like that. If you have SSH access to that server, you can actually install the whole thing with this curl and bash script. Um, it'll install the whole thing for you, and you just have to make sure you know the IP address of that server because that's what you will set it up through. Now, at this point, um, it's up to you to choose what you want to install your server through. Um, again, pick the one that matches your use case. Um, for me, I'm going to be doing a remote server since I'm going to be opening up an example, um, an example Linode server just so I can kind of walk you guys through this. Um, when I installed it on the server in my home, which is an old 2010 HP Enterprise server, I used regular computer because I had issues even having Debian 11 already installed. I had issues installing it this way. So the regular operating system file that it installs worked just fine. And Raspberry Pi, I haven't tested myself, but I have seen people do it. And that's as simple as flashing it to that SD card that you're going to be putting in your Raspberry Pi. So from here, it's up to you to set it up. Um, choose the operating system, the option, and the computer that you're going to be running it on. Get it set up, and I'm going to meet back with you right away. But in your world, it'll be right after you are able to see, congratulations, Unihost has been successfully installed. Depending on what you are installing it from, it could take 15 minutes, it could take two hours, it could take any time. Um, it kind of just depends on what device you're going to be installing it on and if you run into any issues. If you do run into any issues in the install process, there is a really nice community over here on Unihost. 
Um, again, the program is open source, so there are people who are always involved in the community, and you can ask questions on their forum because they have, they have been able to help me when I have had issues. So I'm going to check back with you guys once my instance is installed, as well as when your instance is installed. So let's head right there. Okay, so my instance is installed, and the first time I'm going to it, it says, your connection is not private. That's because you are logging into an IP address that doesn't have an SSL certificate. That's fine. If you're in Chrome, just click Advanced, uh, or and then proceed to the site. We need to get there anyway. From here, you'll be met with a screen that'll look something like this. Um, if I zoom in a little bit to kind of give you guys a better view, uh, it's kind of going to walk us through the setup process. So from here, we have this really nice Unihost portal that we can log into. Um, I'm going to click on Begin. From here, I would always recommend, this is asking you your main domain, I would always recommend saying, I don't have a domain. This is going to give you a domain name to test with um, and play around with just to get started. I use this one for testing out stuff before I get my main domain set up, staging sites and stuff like that. Nohost.me works great, and I'm just going to do um, Linode testing uh, server. And I'm just going to make that my domain name. From here, it's going to create that domain for you. Now you get to set up your information. I'm going to do eRyman, um, type my name. This is your username, password. Basically, this is the admin user of the Unihost instance. Make sure you set a password that you are very comfortable with. Um, you need to make this secure. You can always change it if it's not, but make sure that this is a complicated password. This is what gives you admin access to your entire server. So security is a pretty good idea when you're working with something like this, especially if you're going to be publishing this to the wide web and you're going to let guests and visitors from across the internet view your site. You want to make sure you have good security. Um, now, this is going to launch a post installation process. This could take quite a few minutes, so just click OK. All right, so I had a little bit of trouble getting my domain set up. Apparently, Linode testing server was already taken, so I switched it over to a different domain. Again, by the time you guys are viewing this, this video, that domain is going to be completely offline, as well as the server for security reasons. Um, but at least it'll be online. Now, at this point, for me, it's already been about five minutes. It's going to take a while to get this post installation process done. Um, when I was installing it on my main server over there in our server closet, that one took about 15 minutes to do this stage. Um, so about it takes about 30 minutes to get installed and set up in total. But once you have access to the dashboard, this is going to be a really, really fun setup. Playing with Unihost took a bit of time, but I'm going to kind of show you some of the things I learned. And honestly, the best way to learn with, about Unihost is to just explore, install programs, do stuff you want. It's, ex it's incredibly simple and has a huge app catalog. Well, anyway, you'll see this soon. So I'm going to stop spoiling stuff. I'm just going to let this finish install installing, and I'll see you all very soon. Alrighty, so another five minutes passed. But if I head over to the dashboard, you will notice Unihost is now available. And I'm going to zoom in just to make this a little bit easier for you all to see. But at this point, you're going to log in with that username and password that you set up. Um, at the start, um, I'll log with my super secure password, and boom, this is your admin dashboard. Very simple, a lot more simple than, say, cPanel, but it's really self explanatory as to what stuff does. Users lets you create and manage users on your system, domains lets you set up domain names and different servers, or really just domains. Applications, that's where we're going to start with system update, tools, diagnostic, and backup. Now, we do want to start with this one. This will give you, it's called the initial diagnosis. And basically what this does is it's going to basically run through your whole system on the server, make sure all your ports are configured just right, um, make sure there's no security issues, see if anything needs to be updated since that release was introduced, and basically just make sure everything's okay. You'll notice mine already found one thing that was wrong um, that we can update. However, this is a Unihost provided domain name, so it might be a little bit iffy as to if I can fix that. Either way, it should be just fine on my end. For you, you might have some issues, and I'll kind of walk through what you might need to change. A lot of it's going to be up to your DNS settings, so if you add it in your own domain at that initial stage, um, you might need to add in some more DNS records, set up email, stuff like that, but it is pretty easy in the long run. Now, you'll notice here, uh, as you see, it found something wrong there. That one probably show up for everybody. I haven't found a way to fix that. DNS is good. My ports exposure is good, web is good, and I have a lot of email errors um, because the outgoing port 25 is being blocked. Now, that might be a thing with um, 
That might be a thing with Linode. I'm going to try and get that figured out. But at least for the example of this video, I'm not going to be doing much with email. From here, we can go into the fun part, and that is the application. So you notice you're starting off with nothing. So we're just going to go ahead and click on install, and boom. This is the catalog of amazing apps that Unohost has to offer. Pretty self-explanatory here as well. Synchronization, that's like file storage. Publishing, that's your CMS systems like WordPress and Drupal. Communication, Office, and so on and so forth. They have a lot of stuff here. And let's start off with like CMS. You'll notice they have stuff like a Bantacart. You scroll down, you got your own Drupal. You got Joomla. You have so many other content management systems. WordPress is all the way at the bottom because, well, W is at the end of the alphabet. But when you go to install it, for example, I will start off with WordPress. You notice it gives you a quick preview. Uh, it has links to the site that it's installing from. And then here are your install settings. Now down here, um, it's going to ask you for the label. This is going to show up in your user panel, which I'll talk about a little bit soon. I'm just going to do um, demo WordPress. I'm going to set that up at that main domain that we set up earlier. And I'm going to do WordPress as my slash domain. Now, if you want it to install directly to that domain, just delete the stuff there. Um, basically, what that's going to do is just going to install that directly to that mo domain. But I do want it to do WordPress install. And I'll do that and set yourself as your administrator. You don't have to install multi-site. And also make sure this box here is checked if you want it to be viewable to people who aren't logged in. From here, you're going to click install. And now what it's going to do is it's going to do exactly what it says. It's going to install WordPress, download all the packages, get it up and running, and you don't have to do anything after this point. It's going to get it to the point that you can access your WordPress admin dashboard and get WordPress set up for yourself. There's a lot of waiting when it comes to installing stuff like this, especially if, if you have a slower server. In my case, mine is a bit of a slower server because I don't want to pay a fortune just to make this video. Um, but it shouldn't take too long, especially if you're running this on a fancier server of your own. Alrighty, and that actually got done faster than I expected. So from here, you can go ahead and if it should take you back to your applications folder. You'll notice you have one application installed here. And now you can go in and click on open this app. Of course, it's going to tell you you have issues and we can actually fix this. Head back over to your admin panel and head back to home and find your domains. From here, click on the domain that your thing is installed at and head over to certificate. This is where you get to install your SSL. By default, Let's Encrypt is the main option. And Let's Encrypt works great for practically anything. Many companies use it. It doesn't have any insurance for security issues, but it does work good enough for personal sites and small business sites. Um, it'll actually just, basically the only reason you install this is to, of course, remove that message and to allow encryption because SSL is kind of needed in modern websites. This shouldn't take too long. It's going to register your server with um, Let's Encrypt, get the order for the SSL, and get that all installed on your site. From here, we can go back to that thing that it asked us and click Reload, and boom, you have your WordPress site. If you head over up to the settings on it and you scroll all the way over um, to get to that, to the end of it, and then type wp-admin, which is how you get to your wp-admin page, you notice it doesn't take you to your normal WordPress admin page. It actually takes you to a Unohost login page. This is because Unohost actually integrates with a bunch of single sign-on. It comes pre-installed with that. And it also adds an extra layer of security. So I enter in my main admin password since you set yourself as the admin when we were installing it. Now you can log in. Um, I don't want to save this. And then, boom, you do that again here in the actual WordPress panel. And now you have direct access into your WordPress site. By default, it's going to call it Unoblog because WordPress is technically a blogging site. But from here, it's all up to you. You can install your WordPress server, do everything you want with it right here from your WordPress dashboard. Um, if you would like to give WordPress, say, if you're running an online store, it needs more power, you can actually go back into the applications, find your install, and go over to WordPress configuration and choose usage. By default, it gives you high, which is good because it gives me more, more RAM. But if you're running an online store, it might need a larger RAM pool, so you can change that to exactly what you need. Click Save, and that'll update that for you. Now, from here, it is pretty much done. That is Unohost. At this point, you can play around with it. I do recommend checking for updates every couple weeks because it is Linux, a lot of packages. As you can see, I installed this today, and a lot of stuff like curl and stuff like that needs to be updated. 
but that takes a while and recommend doing this like when no one's online because certain pages especially for updating applications will go down when that happens but it does it is a pretty stable update process um from there it is kind of up to you um decide how you would like to do it you can set up backups if you want you can add other users different user groups um but at that point it's up to it's up for you to explore Unihost has some great learning processes and there's a lot that you can do with it and I found it really fun to set up my home lab using Unihost. I have it running a Jellyfin server, like three different WordPress websites, my blog, and a bunch of other things. And the best part is it's open source, so I am able to go into the code base and check out how if I want a different theme. Let's say this admin panel is too boring. I can go into the CSS settings, update all of that, and do whatever I want, make it look different. Um, one more thing I did want to bring up was this user interface. If you have other users here... This is basically a link to all of your apps. We only have one installed here, but by clicking on that, it brings you back there. Um, if you're the admin, you can go back to admin. It's a pretty easy system. And, of course, you're going to have to log back in again. But either way, um, it is a pretty neat system. Um, and, yeah, that is Unihost. So if you have any questions, do feel free to go into the comments below or at me on Twitter, um, Ethan underscore Ryman. And I can help you with most things on Unihost. I'm definitely building my familiarity with it. But otherwise, head over to the Unihost community. All of those will be linked down in the description below. Um, but yeah, with all that said, uh, I hope you guys enjoy this tutorial. I'm trying this out, seeing if it works okay. If you did like it, um, be sure to like the video. And if you want to see more stuff from me, be sure to subscribe. That really helps the channel. We're trying to make it to 500 subscribers by the end of the year. I know I said 1,000. I'm kind of making it a little bit more reachable. Let's try and make it to 500 by the end of the year. So without further ado, I'd like to say thank you all for watching. Have a great rest of your day, and see you all next time. Bye-bye.